This video is for ELEC 1510 Logic Design. This is Lecture 21, Video 1 on Registers, corresponding to Textbook Section 6.1. So a very basic register is essentially nothing more than a series of flip-flops constructed in parallel. And so parallel is going to be an important word in this section. Parallel means that they are operating at the same time and that they store data that is being operated on at the same time. Multiple bits are being operated on at the same time. So this is in contrast to serial data where you operate on one bit at a time. So we can see here a four bit parallel register and there's nothing really more to this than just four flip flops all connected together. So they have the same clock uh, as you can see, the clock is connected together, so they all operate at the same time. There are four bits that are input to the four flip-flops, I3, I2, I1, I0, four outputs that are A0 through A3. Um, there's an extra line here called clear. Uh, this clear is connected to an extra input to the flip-flops, and this can be constructed with some additional circuitry. And what that will do is just set A sub N, so any of the outputs, to 0. So that clear line will just set all of the outputs to 0. So that means that that basically just resets the contents of the register. That's not really any different than just putting all zeros into these inputs as well, but, you know, it's a little bit simpler. Okay, so there's nothing really going on here other than you just store the data on the input lines for one clock cycle at the outputs. So this isn't terribly useful, which is why we need to construct more complex types of registers in order to actually act like the basic components that you'd see in a real computer. Okay, so let's look at a more complex structure. This would be called a parallel load register. This is what allows you to maintain the same data in the register for multiple clock cycles or load in new data. And so you can load in new data by using this load wire here. The new data is input on I0 all the way through I3. The outputs here obviously are A0 through A3. So this is an interesting structure that allows you to actually maintain that data by having it feed back to the inputs of the flip-flops. The reason why you would do that is because it's just generally bad practice in computer design to turn off the clock. Um, that can cause delays in the clock, and normally you don't want any delays in the clock at all. So rather than turn off the clock to maintain the same data, you keep the clock going but feed back the data to the inputs of the flip-flops to make sure that it stays at the output again. So if we look at one of the inputs to the flip-flops, say D right here, the logical function for D is going to be load, and I'm going to call load just L, just for uh, brevity's sake. So it's going to be load or L prime. So that is this line right here, L prime times A naught. So that's the output from the flip-flop. Or L times I naught. So now you can see that in this case, when L is a zero, D is equal to A naught, and so it maintains the data that it used to have. So as long as the load wire there is kept at logical zero, the, the flip-flop outputs and the register outputs will maintain the data that they had. Now if L goes to a 1, in this case, so again 0, 1, if L goes to a 1, then you load in new data from the input lines I0 through I3. Now, as opposed to a parallel register, we also have serial registers, and generally these are called shift registers, because what happens is when you input bits to a serial register, you have to shift it over into place. So let's say that originally, this serial shift register contained data 0, 0, 0, 0 at the outputs from the flip-flops. So this is a 4-bit number. This could be connected to another 4-bit number and some operation could be performed on it. Now, let's say that right when a clock signal hits, there's a 1 at the input to the first flip-flop there. Now, 
the zero at that first flip-flop becomes a one. The zero that was at the first flip-flop gets propagated through to the second, and that zero stays. The rest of these zeros get propagated through. All right, so now let's say that in the second time instance, there's a zero at the input, and now another rising edge hits. This zero gets propagated through here. The one gets propagated through to a one, then zero, then zero. Um, now let's say for the next bit, we have a one. So that one gets propagated through here, then the zero gets propagated through, the one gets propagated through, and the zero gets propagated through. And now finally, let's pick another bit. I'll just make this one a zero as well. Another clock hits, that zero gets propagated through, the one here becomes the one there, then zero moves, then one moves. So as you can see, we end up with zero, one, zero, one stored in the bits of the register, and it took four clock cycles to shift all of those bits over into place. So this is clearly a different structure than a parallel register. In some ways it can be more efficient. Um, you do have to take more clock cycles in order to store all of the data, uh, because clearly it took four clock cycles for the first bit to be shifted all the way over into place. If this was a 64-bit register, it would take 64 clock cycles, so it's a little bit slower. Serial transfers, by definition, are usually slower than parallel transfers. We'll see more examples of uses of serial shift registers in the next lecture as well.